Everybody, we are chapter seven and we are into the flood of Noah. Now, this one again is going to be a little bit longer. <laughs> Sorry, promise that chapter eight we'll go back down to making them kind of short, but it's a lot to go into on this one. Again, uh, that was my friend Jax uh, saying the intro. Her link will be down in the description below. So please go check her out if you haven't already. Other than that, let's get to praying. And let's get to getting into this study. All right. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us your word. Um, thank you. For the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. Uh, thank you for 
just everything you do for us. Thank you, Lord. Um, most importantly, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And rising again three days later, conquering both sin and death, that who shall ever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Give me wisdom and discernment and understanding as I go through your word today, Lord. Um, and help it to reach the ears you'd like it to reach. And help it to teach the people you'd like it to teach. And just, you know who needs to hear this. And you know who doesn't. But in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get to it. Oh. I stand by. All right. Chapter 7. Let me get the Bible up here. Boom, 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 boom. Share screen. All right, so we are in chapter 7 of Genesis. Oh, so, <clears throat> so, you have to go back to our session in chapter 6, last week's video, if you want to understand why the flood had to happen. Um, it wasn't just because of violence on the earth. It, it was because of violence. Well, we all better start gassing up our boats because <laughs> there's plenty of violence on the earth now. Um, uh, Noah is a very important person in the Bible. He's brought up many times. Uh, he's brought up, he's mentioned as one of the three righteous along with Job and Daniel in Ezekiel 14 and 14 and 1420. Um, Jesus talks about him in Matthew 24, 37 through 39, and Luke 17, 26. Peter talks about Noah in 1 Peter 3, 20, and in 2 Peter 2, 5, and Paul talks about Noah in Hebrews 11, 7. Um, just as part of the just some parts in the Bible where he's mentioned uh you know and uh that Hebrews one that's called the Hall of Faith um the Hall of the Faithful and uh Noah's mentioned in there um there is no event in the Bible more scientifically documented as the flood, and we're going to get into that a lot more later, you know, uh, we're going to get into a bunch of the science of the flood, just a lot of simple things, uh, but let's get into it, and the Lord said, come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now, he called him righteous. Notice, he's righteous. He's not sinless. He's righteous. He's righteous through faith. Um, but uh, I like how it says, come thou. Come thou. Uh, hearkens to, you know, the way the Lord speaks to all of us, you know. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And uh, what does Noah's name mean? It means comfort or rest. So when he says that, that's Noah. Noah's comfort or rest. Um, of every clean beast thou shalt take. To <laughs> every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. 
So you got to remember that um, by sevens means there was actually 14. There were seven males and seven females. Um, so there's actually 14 of them. And of the bees that are not clean by two, the male and the female. Of the fowls also by the air by sevens, male and female, to keep the seed alive upon the face of the earth. Now, one of the big questions is, is how did no one know what was clean and what was unclean? You know, again, the Levitical law doesn't come for a long time after this. I think it's just something known. God told Adam, I'm, it's something that was known from the beginning of the time. I mean, how did uh, Abel know exactly what animals to sacrifice to God? They just knew. They didn't need a Bible back then. They just knew. God had told Adam. <sighs> for, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and every living abundance that has made, I will destroy off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commandeth. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the flood. Um, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days, the waters of the floods were upon the earth. So they actually went into the ark seven days before the flood actually started. So <laughs> they were actually in that ark seven days before the flood happened. There's a lot of symbolicity there, why they had to be in there seven days before the floods happened. But I'm trying to keep this. Oops. Oh. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great broken up and the windows of heaven were open. We're going to get a lot into this uh, great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. We're going to get a lot into that at the end of this. Um, so just know that it didn't just rain. It wasn't just rain that came down. Um, it also came up from the ground. So, yeah, it rained from above, and the waters came up from the bottom. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind and every bird of every sort. And they went into in unto Noah into the ark two by two all flesh wherein is the breath of life. And uh, I like right here, it says, and they went in unto Noah. Noah didn't have to go into the jungle and round up these. He wasn't out there with nets and lassos trying to get all these in. They just came to him. He wasn't out there chasing them down. God just brought them to him. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the, and the Lord shut him up. Um. God shut the door. 
Is it Noah and his sons and the wife? None of them closed the door. God closed the door and locked it. At this point, at this point right here, when God shut the door, there was no more arguing. There was no more, well, my God wouldn't do this, and uh, my God wouldn't do that, and, you know, all theological debates were over. God shut the door, and once he shut the door and locked it, it was closed forever. Everybody that was outside could not get in anymore. And there's a lot of prophecy right there in that little statement right there. Once God shuts the door, there's no more getting on the boat. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bear up the ark. And it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Um, so how do they know that... How do they know that they were 15 cubits above the mountains? Well, they had to at least be 15 cubits above. Remember, <clears throat> the, the ark was 30 cubits tall. And the way the ark was built, um, it was almost like a square box. And uh, the center of gravity would have been right in the middle way it was built and actually if you look at how the thing how the arc was built it could almost go to a 90 degree angle before it would ever flip it would always right itself and uh so for that to be where the center of gravity had to be um smack dab in the middle it was 15 cubits that sat under the water of the arc 15 cubits of the arc sat under the water um so the water had to at least be 15 cubits above the tallest mountain or the ark would get stuck on it. So that's how they would know how tall the waters were on the earth. And all the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both the fowl and the, the both of the fowl and of the cattle and of the beast and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. So, <clears throat> we're going to get into this a lot now. We're going we're gonna to get into a lot of the science... Above the ark. About the ark. Well, first we're going to talk about floods generally from other, every, almost, almost every other ancient culture had a version of this story. A lot of it uh, matched with the Bible, but I think it's something like 98 or 96% of all cultures have a version of this story. Story. Some of them get a little crazy, but the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greek, the Hindu, the Chinese, Druids, 
Polynesians, Mexicans, Peruvians, the Native Americans, and Greenland. I mean, there are just some to name that have a version of this story in their uh, in their history. <clears throat> um, another thing, really, unfortunately, in the Christian world, we have to hear this. Uh, was it a universal flood or was it a local flood? Did the flood actually cover the whole planet or was it local because they want to say there wasn't that many people on the planet and they were all based in one area and God just flooded that area? Blah blah. blah. But there's things in the Bible um, that suggest otherwise. For one, we just read it. Every living substance was destroyed upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping thing and fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. No only remained alive. So that means <clears throat> every plant, every animal that roamed this earth was killed in this flood. So for order for that to happen, it had to cover the whole pl planet. So it was a universal flood. And it says it up here in verse 4 too. <clears throat> For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance that I have made will be destroyed from the face of the earth. So no, it can't be local. And 719, it says, 719, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. That means every mountain was covered. Every mountain. Again, so it was universal. The whole planet was covered. And then again, we're going to get into uh, this in a couple weeks. But just a little look forward. Chapter 9, verses 11 and verse 15. God promised to never do it again. He would never do it again by water. He would never destroy the earth again with water. So if it was a localized flood, then God hasn't kept his promise. Because there's been many localized floods. I've been in one. <laughs> we were very flooded here about four years ago. And it lasted for like two years. About two and a half years. We were flooded. Um, so therefore, then God didn't keep his promise if it was a local flood. It had to be a universal flood because the whole world's never been flooded ever again. Um, scientific proof. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm in the middle of recording. Uh, sorry, I was getting a phone call. Uh, dinosaurs. Now, for them to be fossilized, they had to die quickly, and a lot of pressure had to be applied at the point of death. Um, that means something had to happen to kill them quickly, and they had to be pressurized very quick. Well, what would cause that? A flood. And what would cause a lot of pressure? Well, if the waters are above the mountains, just think what the pressure is going to be like down below. Just like, you know, you... A human being can't go into deep waters without depressur or pressurizing and depressurizing, all that stuff. <sighs> Just a second. Oh, I got to edit that out loud. All right. So, yeah, uh, dinosaurs, uh, for them to be fossilized, they had to die quickly. And they had to be pressurized immediately because there's no decay. Um, uh, mammoths, same thing with mammoths. Uh, they're found in Alaska and they're found in Serbia. Um, they're found with tropical plants in their mouths and in their stomachs. They're found still standing up frozen, uh, which means they were killed instantly and frozen instantly. Uh, we're going to get into the continental divide here in a second, but yes, when the waters came up from the earth. This is a broke um, the ground and split. 
the whole world used to be one continent and the atmosphere was a lot different. We're going to get into that here in a minute. So something happened that caused where the mammoths lived to have tropical plants they were able to eat. And all of a sudden they suffocated and froze where they stood with the stuff still in their stomach. Um, petrified forest. Emerald Bird said he found petrified forest only 100 miles from the South Pole. Now, if you all know where the South Pole is, that's Antarctica. It's unha- uninhabitable by humans most of the time. Um, yeah, it's terrible. So why is there a petrified forest down there? Um, and then, of course, land animals can be found below sea level. And sea animals are found on the top of mountains. How'd they get up there? You hear all kinds of weird scientific... I've, I've heard a lot of excuses in the scientific world. But uh, what's most likely how they got up there? There was a flood. The sea animals were on top of the mountains. And when the flood came back down... They were stuck up there and they died. And that's why their bones are found up there. Now, what was the earth like before the flood? Because the flood changed a lot of things. Um, We're going to look at 7-Eleven a lot here. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the same month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broke up and the windows of heaven were opened. So the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. So there's a couple of theories on this. The first one is the canopy theory. The canopy theory is where there was an atmos- atmospheric water shield around the planet before the Uh, Before the flood. And it protected us from cosmic rays. uh, Which caused aging. Um, That would also explain why people lived so much longer. uh, Before the flood. as After the flood happens. You can see people start. The ages start to drop quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Immediately after the flood is over. Um, so, and then that would explain the windows of heaven were opened. That was that water canopy, that water atmospheric shield that was above us fell to the earth and rained down on us. And that was one of the things that flooded us. And then again, it says the great, the fountains of the great, great deep broken up. Um, that is the known as the hydroplate theory, um, and that is what we would call today the continental drift. We're all the continents don't actually exactly line up. I should have pulled up a globe of this. But if you, like in the Atlantic Ocean, there's a mountain range that runs almost the whole length of the Atlantic Ocean from the top, from the north to the south. If you take that mountain range and pull it back up on top of the earth and then connect the continents, it almost lines up perfectly. Um, so what I'm thinking happened is it broke right there, split apart, and that part fell into the ocean. That mountain range fell into the ocean. Now, unfortunately, the canopy theory and the hydroplate theory, they argue a lot over which one is right. I think they're both right. I think they both happened. I think the waters fell from the heavens and the earth shot water up from underneath split the land and uh part of the ocean fell in part of the land fell into the ocean and created the world what it is now and actually 
you know, everybody knows the earth tips. A lot of theories say that the earth used to stand straight up, and that's why it was tropical all the way around. We had that atmospheric water shield that probably kept the whole planet at a certain degrees at most times because it didn't matter. The cosmic rays didn't just cut into the equator. It was probably shared. Um, the weather was shared better that way, um, so there wasn't winters. Um, I said there would never been rain before until this time. Again, you got to remember that they'd never heard of rain before until the flood of Noah. So, again, when Noah's going around saying, hey, there's going to be water falling from the sky, they'd never seen water fall from the sky. So, like, what are you talking about, buddy? <laughs> so, that's how I believe it happened. And uh, another thing to remember is they were in the ark 377 days. They were on in the ark for five months while it was floating and seven and, on, seven and a half months resting on top of the mountain. It's a long time. It's one of the reasons why God promised Noah he would never do it again because, yeah. Probably was not the best of times. <laughs> no, it probably did not want to do it again. But yes, that's why God made the promise. I won't ever do this again by water. Now, by water, he won't do it again. By fire, it's a whole other story. But there was a bigger story told here with this flood. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people look at the flood as it is what it is. You know, a lot of times in the Bible, the Bible has a literal meaning and it has a spiritual meaning. The literal meaning is, yes, there is a lot of weird stuff going on. God had to wipe everybody out except for Noah and his family. And start all over again. Because man was corrupted. That's the literal story. Spiritual story. There's three types of people in this flood. They were the ones that perished. Which was millions of people. Millions of people perished in this flood. There were the people that got carried through the flood. That was only eight people. So when you look at it, think about the tribulation times and stuff like that. When tribulation comes, you know, the Lord said himself, <clears throat> if Jesus didn't come back, there'd be no flesh left on earth. Because of how bad things were getting. So millions of people die during the tribulation. Actually, probably billions. When it says a third of the world, so billions of people die. And... uh Only eight people made it through the flood. That means a very small, very small portion of believers are going to make it through the tribulation to the other side. But there's a third. There's a third. There's a third people that were involved in this. And that has to do with one person. That was Enoch, who was raptured before the flood. Remember what we read about Enoch? Think in chapter five. Yeah. Enoch was translated. Enoch never saw death. He was raptured before the flood came. And that's the church. And everybody's like, well, that's one person. Well, we're one bride. We are the bride of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We're one. 
We are one. We are the bride of Christ. We are the body of Christ. That's what the church is. And it's one. And I also want to point out just one little thing. When was Enoch raptured? Before the flood. Not in the middle of the flood, not after the flood. Enoch was raptured before the flood. It was a pre-tribulation rapture. <laughs> but all right. I actually ran through that pretty quick. Even with a phone call, I'm gonna have to edit out of here. Uh next will be chapter eight. Well, I thought that was going to take a lot longer, but I burned through that pretty quick. Um, again, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer them. I don't know everything. I said before the flood, it, we got very little information what the world was like before the flood. Little, We only know things like it didn't rain. There was a mist that came up from the ground that watered the plants. Um, the continent was the world was made of one continent before the continent middle of drift. Uh, I said people lived a lot longer. <laughs> people lived almost to be a thousand years old before the flood. And then, yeah, we're going to see as we get on into this, people start not living nearly as long very quickly <laughs> after the flood. Um, so something is definitely different pre-flood. Um, so. Well, all right. So next will be chapter eight. So hope you all, all enjoyed this. Um, other than that, never forget Genesis 9-3. Peace. Peace.